a little video, a little audio. Let's get the Beastly Thoughts up on the screen. A little twosome. Say, hi, Beastly. Hey, man. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Can we do like a fist palm? Fist bump. There oh. it is. <laughs> What's going on, Beastly? How you doing this week? I'm doing real good, man. I had a hell of a week. I played lots of games and enjoyed family. I uh, just got done making a banana pudding. I'm feeling good about Ooh. myself. I got my fucking beard back. So I'm half of a man. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, banana pudding and a beard all in one week? You can't fucking lose a it. Fucking banner week, dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so everybody I'm glad to see you, man. Oh yeah, man. Every every Sunday is always the way that, you know, it's it's the cherry on top of the Sunday for me. Uh getting together with, you know, one of my dearest friends. Usually two, as people may notice. Yeah. One of one of the hosts is invisible today and his microphone isn't working. Yeah, he had to work today. No, he didn't have to work. He had to he, go visit family, he right? Go visit family today in, in Canada. And, uh, you know, in Canada, a family vacation or a trip can be 500 miles. So, I mean. That's a, big, <laughs> so, a big country. So, Robbie isn't going to be with us today, but we know he's here in spirit. But we still got a ton right. of stuff to talk about. Uh, and, and I know I had a great game, a great week playing my games this week. And we were talking about some awesome stuff pre show. Let's get to it for the fans. All right. So, uh, I want to start off, okay, so I've been playing on my PS Vita this week, uh, and I wanted to talk about it with you a little bit, because I know that you're a huge PS Vita fan. Absolutely. Um, and I have two of them. I have one of the old versions, and I have one of the newer versions. It's more the slim one, like it's more rounded, and it's slim, uh, which I find to be, even though it has a technically worse screen, it's an LCD screen instead of the uh, OLED. OLED that was in the original, I find this to be a much better system than the old version just because it's so much more comfortable for me to hold my hands but i've been playing rocket uh, not rocket knight i'm sorry i've been playing uh shovel, shovel knight on it a lot uh, i finally got around to playing that and i was really hating it i was hating on it hardcore uh because i was playing it on my old vita though i have that downstairs next to the couch uh so i'm one watching a tv program that i'm not necessarily that involved in you know i'll pick up the vita and i'll play a little bit and I was hating it, man, because like my hands are cramping up on that thing, and I find the D-pad to be super unreliable. Like, you know, I just want to hold straight down, and like shovel knights going this way and that oh, way. Man. I'm like, oh, this thing is driving me crazy. Uh, so what I did is I, you know, I grabbed this one, which was upstairs in the office. I charged it up. I threw uh, shovel knight on it, and I'm like, holy shit! You know, this system is amazing, right? Uh, shovel knight turned into be out to be like a triple a game as far as i'm concerned it's just so much fun to play uh the controller is so much better on this one the d-pad i don't know if it sticks out more i don't think it's any bigger wow uh, i wish it was a little bit bigger you can see let me uh i got a playstation controller right here you can see how small the d-pad is compared to like a controller it's kind of okay yeah a little bit difficult to yeah see. It it's is. a lot smaller on the um vita which I find to be, you know, I got big thumbs, I got man hands. <laughs> I found it to be, a, uh, you know, somewhat inaccurate because, you know, I'm so used to like a, yeah, like a full size controller, um, but it is much more accurate on the new, the new one uh, that I am really enjoying this PS Vita. And I was actually watching one of your videos about a possible successor to the PS Vita. I'm not sure actually, were you saying that there's going to be a successor, like a, like another version, like an upgrade from from PSP to PS Vita or just another version of the Vita? Well, at this point, it's basically rumor and conjecture, speculation at best. But industry insiders have leaked information about the upcoming PlayStation event on September 7th. And they've leaked chip ID numbers, or I guess uh, GPU chip uh, identification numbers. And they leaked two. Mm -hmm. One is very similar to the PlayStation 4 that we have now, as far as the actual numbers that coincide with the GPU. And the other is very close to the original PlayStation Vita. And so people were speculating that it could be a new GPU for the Vita. It could be an upgrade to the Vita. It could be the next generation Sony handheld. And first of all, let me just say this about the story you just told. I had no idea that playing the game on the OLED versus the new would have made that much of a difference. I've never even held. Oh, it's huge for me. Never even held the new one before. So that really. Oh, really? No, it piques my interest. I, there's five Vitas in my house, and they're all the original OLEDs. And I just never would have thought uh, that that the newer version would have, you know, I guess 
the way that they crafted it, it's more better suited for adult hands. Uh, that, yeah, that's the uh, back of it, like there's more area for me to hold my hands. Like the touch pad on the back is smaller, so it's more comfortable for me to like put my hands kind of like this. Yeah. Uh, there's just more room. I don't have to like do this all the time. Got you. You know what I mean? Um, and then the screen, I think, is actually a little bit bigger, uh, even though it's it's not it's not the OLED screen that was on the original, which looks you know the colors are brighter and more more vibrant. Uh, but the screen is fine. Like the LED, it looks great. It's not like a bad screen by any means. Uh, but yeah, the main thing is it's it's lighter, it's thinner, and it's more comfortable mm. uh, to hold and to play. And I think that the D-pad is actually a little better too. I still don't like the nubs, like the thumbsticks. I still don't like mm -hmm. them. As much as I wanted them when I was playing PSP games, I'm not happy with their imp implementation on the Vita. Like they're just not big enough to be accurate to me. It might as well just gotcha. be a D-pad. Well, um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a really nice system. I'm hoping. Didn't they say that they were going to get rid of it altogether? They, they stopped support for it. Basically, they stopped support for it. They never said that you know, the Vita is going to go away right now, or you know, it's going to go away in 2017. They haven't said it, but people have been reading between the lines because there's really nothing coming out for it. No one's really supporting it. You get a few indies, you know, every couple of months, and so for all intents and purposes, from the eyes of the public, the Vita is dead. But my mm -hmm. my opinion on the whole possibility of a new Vita is is pretty optimistic. Uh, Sony, for for a company as big as Sony, and they have so many different avenues of income, PlayStation is their dominant force when it comes to making money. PlayStation has basically saved the company when they were drowning in debt and losing money, you know, in every avenue of business. And the the PSP was a huge success. A lot of that success was due to the fact that it was easily hackable. Uh, but yeah, the PlayStation right. 3, the PlayStation 4, <laughs> the PlayStation 2 have all been very successful for Sony. And I believe that the Vita was a misstep. Uh, I think that Sony didn't support it the way that they needed to. I think that the developers didn't want to jump on board and support it either. Uh, but if Sony intends on continuing to make money through the video game avenue of their company, they need to jump on board and try to find as many ways to make money in gaming as possible. If they're going, you know, mm -hmm. as far as... Uh, you know, putting both feet in the water when it comes to VR, something as simple as as making a dedicated handheld shouldn't be that much of an issue. Uh, I think that the, the problem to me, though, with handhelds is that I, you say the PSP was a success. I didn't really see it as that. I saw that they, you know, they introduced the UMDs. That was that was a huge failure. The UMD movies, mm -hmm. uh, just carrying around UMDs like these little discs didn't make any sense mm -hmm. compared to. Um, Nintendo in their cartridge-based format. It was just much more convenient to have those little cartridges and these discs, which were very delicate. You could download games to the PSP, um, but I never really, I never really thought that that thing took off. Uh, the PSP Go I thought was really cool hardware, but again, it didn't really take off. Uh, and then they came out with the Vita, and I love the idea of the Vita, but it was so uncomfortable to play. I don't know, like who they designed this thing for. It was terribly uncomfortable for me to play. Uh, and this is the the second generation Vita is like the most, the best hardware I think they've ever made in a portable space, but it's so hard for them to compete with a cell phone that's just already, already in your pocket, right? It's, it's there already, you know? So like, it's so, how do you make a, how do you make a handheld that competes with your iPhone or your Android device? Well, you know, in, in my opinion, it's a pretty easy answer. And I'm sure a lot of people will mm -hmm. agree and some people may not, because I know there are tons of people who play RPGs on their phone who play RTSs and first-person shooters. Uh, but yeah. for me, the thing that the deciding factor between a handheld console and a mobile device is touchscreen versus an actual controller. For me, that yeah. is a huge difference, that degree of control that you have when you actually have tactile buttons that you can actually move around and feel and articulate, and it translates to a but screen. But you, you can get a controller for your phone. You can, but how practical? How, many, how often do you see people do that? You know? Not very often, but I also don't see people too often, you know, carting around a PS Vita or a, or even really a DS at this point. I see. I rarely see a DS out in the public. I, like most people I know, their kids have them, and their kids bring them everywhere because they don't have cell phones anyway, or they have them sitting next to the couch. I see them. Believe it or not, I see a lot more 3 DSs out in the wild than I see Vitas. Every now and then, I'll go to a Best Buy or something, and I'll see somebody walking around. Usually, a guy. You know, he's got his Vita out or his 3DS out and his wife is looking at movies. You know, so they do yeah. exist. But for me, if Sony was able to capitalize on that mentality and create a device that works well, 
that that you're able, it doesn't break your hand like you said an Egyptian torture device uh, like the Vita oh. was right. Uh, <laughs> honestly, if they're able to put something in your hand as comfortable as maybe a 3DS, but it has the newer technology and hardware that really um, accents the kind of software that's being created nowadays, downloadable and and give you something similar to a, a home console experience on the go. That's something that most phones can't do. And Nintendo, believe it or not, is 100% doing that. You know, they're going after... Nintendo's got a different They're going after angle the mobile though, market, they're going after the handheld market, and they're going after the console market at the same time. I mean, just... Yeah, that's really smart. Like, it's a cool idea they got. I don't know how successful it's going to be. I don't know what Nintendo's feature is going to be, but I can tell you I'm excited about the, the Nintendo yeah. NX as far as we know it's going to be called. Uh, but what really excites me about it the most is the Nintendo properties and being able to play that on any game I buy for the NX, being able to play that portable and on the TV, right? That is, it's genius, yeah. right? I don't think that Sony can offer that with the Vita I don't, or a Vita 2 or whatever that next thing would be. Well, I don't know how they, how they compete with that. Um, and to me, it's like, if I really... If I really want a mobile gaming experience, like the NX, it's going to be where it's at. I don't know how Sony can fit into that between the NX and the and the cell phone. Cell phones, I mean, games on cell phones are really popular now. Yeah, and, and believe it or not, games on cell phones graphically are so damn intense. I think Kate and my kids are yeah, watching the hardware of a cell night. phone. They thought it was a, a console game, and it was on iOS. So I mean, it's really, really getting up there. But the thing is, Sony has been on the same page as Nintendo for quite a while now, and, and a lot of people don't realize that. Back in the day when the, the Super Game Boy came out and you were able to plug your cartridge into the Super Nintendo, put your Game Boy game into that cartridge and play your, your GBA games or your Game Boy games on the on the television, that, that whole idea transcended and continued on with the Nintendo GameCube. When PlayStation made the PSP, they, they included, well, you, not included out of the box, but you could buy a peripheral where you could plug it into your PSP and play it on the television, right? And then they kind of... Yeah, but who did that? I did. <laughs> I bought the adapter. I did it too. I bought the adapter, but it looked awful. It didn't even fit like on a 1080p screen. Like, it was a shitty experience, Yeah, well, well but I did it. You're right. It, I did it, it too. <laughs> I was playing Pat Upon on my fucking big screen TV. <laughs> you know? See, uh, and when, when the PSP came out, 1080p TVs weren't out successful or anything like that. We were kind of going from the old kind of into the new. Um, but I think Sony has kind of been on that same page. Even with the PlayStation Vita, they made the Vita TV to give you that that option to play these kind of games on your television. So I think that Sony could Yeah, but that was a bust too. That thing It was a it was a failure, but how do you how do you find yeah. success? You find success through failure. You know, the the most successful people Or come. or you stop throwing bad money after bad, bad or bad. good money after bad. <laughs> Well, you know, like you just like, okay, this isn't going to work. Like, how do we compete with a, th a cell phone that costs a thousand dollars? Right. Like they can't release something that compete can compete hardware wise with a cell phone. They can't because mm -hmm. a cell phone costs a thousand dollars. You don't realize that because you pay for it over months or, you know, it's it's built into your contract. But a cell phone costs a thousand dollars, like a, a high end one. Yeah. How can how can Sony compete graphically with that? You know, I guess it would all depend on whatever kind of chips they decide on if they do decide to move forward in the heart with the hardware for a mobile device. I honestly hope yeah. that they do. You know, to me, Sony is just like Nintendo. Maybe their IPs aren't as popular. Uh, you know, they don't ring true to gamers as, as well as the names like Mario, Donkey Kong, Luigi, Metroid. Uh, but they do have some really popular franchises out there. That's, I think, honestly, would translate well into the mobile market. Uh, and like I was saying before, if you talk to anyone who's owned businesses, who's become successful in the world, those are the ones that have had the most failures. The people who you go through failure after failure after failure, you learn from those mistakes so you can fine tune your success. And so to me, Sony, with the failure of the Vita and the way that it was mismanaged and the way that uh, the hardware and the software was not supported, hopefully they learn from that. If they do decide to release something new for the gamers in the, in the mobile market, hopefully they have a better strategy going forward in the future. I hope so. I, I kind of think it's you think it's, it's over? almost like a battle now. Yeah, it's not a battle worth fighting anymore. I don't really. It's not for Sony. They've taken two, what I think are pretty strong shots at this. You know, they put out powerful hardware uh, both times. The PSP was powerful for its day, 
Uh, it was good hardware. I played a lot of games on the PSP, especially Street Fighter Alpha. I loved playing Street oh, Fighter Alpha yeah. on that thing. Um, and it, they just didn't take off. They took off. The PSP took off arguably hardware-wise, but not software-wise, uh, mainly because of what you said, all the pirating that could be done on that thing. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they can really well, pull it off. I do like this Vita hardware, but again, I don't carry it around because look how big it is, and I've already got a phone in my pocket that I can play. It's, you know, it's, if I'm standing in line, I don't need dumb dual joysticks when I'm standing in line at the DMV. I just want something that distracts me enough that I don't realize that I'm standing in line at the DMV. Well, <laughs> the thing with the Vita, right, is in, in theory, it was a perfect handheld device. When we heard about it, it was amazing. Dual analogs. It's got shoulder buttons. It's basically a, a, a portable handheld exp I mean, console experience. But it wasn't implemented properly. All to me, the games that required dual analogs were not implemented properly. Games like Resistance, uh, Call of Duty, uh, Black Ops Declassified, uh, Killzone, even Killzone Mercenary, which is, I'll say, a great game for a handheld device. But when it comes to control, it just wasn't on the same level as what we're used to when we pick up a DualShock Four or an Xbox One, yeah. Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty yeah. controller. So hopefully they learn from it. Honestly, I I believe in my heart. And at some point, Sony will. It might be five years from now. It might be 10 years from now. They're going to continue. They, they're they going to bring something else out that's going to be a competitor in the mobile space. It's just what they do, in my opinion. I don't I don't believe they'll let it end with the Vita and just say, oh, we'll just cut our losses and let that be. They're making a lot of money on the PlayStation 4, this new hardware that's coming out. They're going to want to find a way to tie that hardware with new hardware, the same way they tried with the Vita and the original PS4. Now with the Neo, they're going to... Uh, and, and, you know, the space has just changed so much, though. It, it's so hard to, like... Like, I, I, I try and picture... Of course, I'm an idiot. I'm a I'm a gamer. I'm a, you know, I'm a nerd. And I'm an early adopter for almost everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to buy it, like, whatever it is, right? But am I going to play it? I don't know, man. I'm not going to bring this thing around with me. It's a, even the NX, which I'm really excited for, I'm not going to bring that thing around with me. I it's going to sit... You know, it's going to sit at the house. Yeah, I, yeah I, you do yeah. tend to... Yeah, you do tend to bring those things around with you. I don't know, man. Well, like, in a world where there is cell phones, like I said, in my pocket, it's so hard to justify carrying around another device that only can play video games. Yeah, well, see, Whereas my cell phone can play video games and it's a communication device. For me, the reason that I take my cell phone, you know, I've got the Sony Xperia phone, so it's the PlayStation phone anyway. I take my phone with me over my Vita or my 3DS predominantly because it has so many more options than just gaming. Of course, you need it for communication, but I also watch Netflix on it. I also also watch my YouTube. Oh, yeah. Totally. I manage my channel from my phone. All these things, it makes it so much easier. And when you look, especially when it comes to space constraints, you don't want to burden your pocket with a Vita when you can just slide a sliver of a cell phone in there. It does a lot more. So that's the problem with the, hard, the handheld market. They've got to be able to yeah. compete with that. And I don't know if they can without becoming a cell phone themselves. You know, we there was one. Yeah, but I don't think that's going to work either. Yeah, I, well, Nokia Engage. I mean, it, it'd be more of the same. Yeah, that was a particularly shitty attempt. That was but... one of the worst attempts. And it looked like a Chaco Taco. It was... Sony tried to do like a PlayStation phone at one point too, didn't they? They do. They, I mean, the phone that you, that they have now is a PlayStation phone, but the original Xperia, it, it was a sliding phone. You slide it up and there was actually a controller. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I think it was cool looking. I, I never bought one, obviously. I wanted it so bad, but I was looking into it. This is a few years ago. We're talking five, six years ago. The games that were, were available on it were like PlayStation 1 classics and not even good ones. So I never got yeah. it. But now you can actually play your PlayStation 4 on your, your PlayStation uh, Xperia phones. You know, you just buy the adapter for the controller. It connects to the phone. You can play it on the go, which is actually really cool. Uh, that's dope. Yeah, it's dope. <laughs> Word. Is it, it works like the PlayStation TV? Yeah, it works very very similar to that. It, it feels like you have your console on the go with you, and you just use your regular DualShock 4 controller. So the mobile the mobile market isn't going anywhere. It's changing. You know, it's changing at such a rapid rate. It's really hard to to pinpoint where it's going to be at in, a, in five minutes because it's so so quick. Uh, but I do believe that Sony is going to be bringing something out into the marketplace that people are going to either love or hate. And I just believe they're going to do something. But I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Do you guys think, Yeah. is it over for Sony? Are they going to bring out a, a new handheld device? Do you think they'll ever bring out a new one again? Would you like them to bring out a new one again? I, I think that 
I, I like options, right? I think that options are the best thing for gamers. And and the more options, you know, the better we are as a community. So, Sony, don't give up on us. We're I'm not going to give up on you. I'm, I'm, I'm scared for Sony. I'm going to be, I'm not going to lie to you, Beastly. Is, you know, um, if they were to do something really colossally stupid, get themselves financially in trouble, I mean, and their gaming division all of a sudden doesn't become the profit center, center that it is, like, I'd really be scared of a future that is Microsoft and Nintendo only, oh, no. right? <laughs> like, I, I'm scared of that future. I really, I value the, the, the competition that all three of these companies are bringing to the table. Yeah. You know, Sony and Microsoft for the adult gamers and Nintendo for the, the younger gamers. Yeah, uh, that would be a terrible, terrible scenario. Hopefully nothing like that ever happens. I mean, knock on some wood, man. Uh, because yeah. I play more PlayStation games than anything else. You know, I love all of them. I love Nintendo. I love what Microsoft has to offer, too. Every video on my channel last week was a Microsoft game. So, bam, for all you haters saying I don't play Xbox, bam. But um, Bam. <laughs> bam. Like an emerald over here. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> the, the day that something like that happens, it'd be a pretty, pretty horrible day for gamers if all we have is Microsoft and Nintendo. They're vastly different. Uh, Microsoft is more in line with what Sony's doing. And Nintendo is kind of the antithesis of both. So we need these options. And hopefully Sony continues on the path they're on, you know, making successful hardware and software. This whole next yeah. this next 12 months is really going to be a, a, a huge deciding factor. Sony's got a lot laying on the line. They got PlayStation VR. They've got PlayStation yeah. Slim. They got the PlayStation Yeah, 4 you want to talk a little bit about that? We saw the, the leak of the PlayStation Slim. Yeah, the PlayStation Slim. The images are online. Uh, not long after mm -hmm. Microsoft's Xbox One hit stores, Sony will be releasing its own slimmed down version of its gaming console. Pictures of the updated... You think this thing is legit? Yes. I have to say... I, yeah, you think it is? It looks beautiful, man. It really, It does look good. It's, if it's not legit, it's a fucking good copy. Yeah, or someone, uh, you know, use a 3D printer the same way that I guess someone in the past did with the Nintendo NX controller. Uh, but it, yeah. it looks really, really good. It appeared in an online auction showing off some changes to the dev device, including what appears to be a matte finish. But the buttons are all in a different place. There's like one mm -hmm. seam in the middle. It's more square, uh, and it just looks really modern. I love the way it looks. That's actually one of my biggest complaints with the PlayStation is it's it's like slanted. trapezic. Yeah. Yeah, it's slanted. So if you want to get to the cords in the back, you gotta, they're on a slant. It's weird. It's like really hard to fucking see back there. It's really hard to feel around because there's all vents and shit back there. Mm -hmm. If it was flat, like the new one looks like it's going to be, it's so much easier to get like around back there. That was really drives me nuts about the PlayStation 4. Well, uh, like, it looks cool. Another yeah, I mean to me it looks good enough that if it's just a slim, I want to get one. Uh, it it looks that good to me. It looks better than the PlayStation Four that I have in the living room. Uh, but the thing is, right? Yeah. You don't know. <laughs> I've, I don't know. Uh, with the Neo question, like coming question, out, man, uh, I'm gonna buy a slim. A, a question: Have you seen just the box, or did you see the actual console? I saw the console. Okay, and it looks good. It does. But I, looks alone are not enough to make me buy a, another PlayStation. I, I don't often buy the slim version of consoles if I got a working console. Um, with the Xbox One S, it actually offered extra functionality. That's what has got me and extra power kinda, too. Right. It definitely has. More yeah. Power. Right. Um, but if this is just a slim version of the PS4, no, I'm not going to buy it. Not especially not with the. Neo rumors running rampant. Well, I mean, this you know? this is the thing, right? Let's let's go ahead and speculate. Let's speculate that this mm -hmm. this image that was leaked is the real deal PlayStation 4 Slim. And if this is yeah. and, and the box set PS4 Slim, 500 gigabyte, it looked pretty standard. It is just a PlayStation 4, nothing new. What if mm -hmm. that's the case? What do you think? Let's speculate. We can dream. What do you think we're going to see yeah. September 7th? Well, I want to see the Neo. But now I'm starting to suspect that I'm going to see the Slim, and they're going to push off that Neo in light of what they heard from Microsoft about the Scorpio. Oh, if that's the case, that means they went. If that's the case, they went totally back to the drawing board. If that, yeah, if that, which I don't think is unwise. Yeah, me neither. I think it's actually a very smart idea considering all the power that Microsoft was touting at E3 this year. That that'll yeah. have a Sony executive quaking in their boots. You know, one minute you're calling your wife and telling her to break out the red panties. We did it. We sold 40, 40 million PS4s. And then the very next minute she's calling you and telling you she's putting on boxers because the Xbox Scorpio has been announced. 
it's it's mm-hmm. one of those situations. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I mean that that Scorpio comes out like imagine if they had gone ahead like if if what we thought was going to happen happen with the Neo, and they announce a, a a version of the PS4 that's say one and a half to two times as powerful as the current PS4, that's compelling and I'm going to buy it yeah. because you know if I could get higher frame rates or better graphics out of the games I already have, well, hell yeah, especially moving forward into the future I'm going to want the best version of these games and I really like my PS4. Um, but then the Xbox Scorpio comes out a year later, and I get that. I'm never buying Destiny. I'm never buying a Call of Duty. I'm never buying a Battlefield. I'm never buying any multi-platform game on the PlayStation until I'm going to buy it on the Scorpio, right? Because yeah. I want the best, graphically, the best version I can get. Absolutely. Unless there's some kind of like major problem, um, which you, you know we could see like forced parity in these things but at this point like it doesn't seem unwise to release a slim version of the ps4 hopefully with an ultra hd blu-ray drive um you know 4k compatible for video purposes that'd be great if the slim has that i doubt it does Ooh. i didn't see anything about it on that box Me neither. did you see anything no and th- that um, would definitely be on the box i would hope Right, if there, it's if it's in there, you'd think it'd be on the box. So I think this thing is just a straight up slim version of the PS4. Um, and when I compare apples to apples, and I'm looking, do I want to get an, you know, do I want to get a Xbox One S or a PS4 Slim? Xbox One S does 4K video. It does Ultra HD Blu-ray. To me, that's the obvious answer. What what if what would be something that could change your mind? Would a price? Let's say two twenty nine. Would that change your mind if you if you didn't own the PS four, the Xbox One? I want. Well, okay. So I I I, I know I told you this, but I'm not sure if you remember. I sold a PS four. Um, I had two yeah, PS fours yeah, in yeah, the house, me, one yeah. downstairs, one upstairs, and I sold the one that was downstairs in preparation because I knew that I'd want a Neo. I I figured I'll sell this thing as soon as possible, get as much money as I can, because I know I'm going to want the Neo. But now, right, I got that money. But I don't know. Do I want to? Do I want to spend it on a PS Slim? Not if it doesn't have 4K. It's not the Neo. What if they don't announce the Neo? What if they announce, you know, the Neo is coming out in September 2017, and it's going to have feature parity or at least power parity with the Scorpio? I'm not buying a PS Slim right now. There's, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing. I'm saving that money. I I I attain that money for a specific purpose, and I'm going to keep it for that purpose. This is my thing, right? Before they announced the Xbox One S or any news about the Scorpio, I remember on the Beastly Thought show, we were all really down about Microsoft's plans for the original mm-hmm. Xbox. It was really, really... Um, uh, Not looking good. It, it was horrible. <laughs> and so when Microsoft yeah. came out with their plan, it they kind of knocked the ball out of the park on, in everyone's opinion. There are people who work at Sony and who work at Microsoft who get paid tons of money to figure out the logistics of this stuff. And I'm sure that mm-hmm. whatever they're going to do on the 7th, is going to keep have people excited you know that's one thing sony they've kind of mastered when it comes to their pressers when it comes to their conferences is they leave people excited uh, i don't think they're going right. go ahead i got two questions for you mm-hmm. the first question is what do you think they should do and the second question is what do you think they're gonna do on september 7th what do i think they should do yeah i think that they should come out with vertical slices of, of games running on the proprietary 4k hardware on the ps4 the playstation neo hardware showing us what the games will look like to get so you think they're gonna you think they should and they they should release the neo this year i don't think they should release it this year i think they should show people what it can do this year see microsoft i mean if they haven't even finalized the hardware yet there's no way they got vertical slices of software that can run on (laughs) you gotta keep in mind that we're talking four and five months ago uh developers they already had development kits for the 4k They've been talking about this for a long time. So assuming that the hardware hasn't been changed. That's assuming. So we don't know. So what I'm saying is all Microsoft did was put on a you know a JPEG of a GPU and had a bunch of happy yeah. ass people talk about what this thing can be. And everybody the best pixels ever. And everybody was <laughs> fucking excited. If Sony does something, yeah. they can just and look, this is all about excitement. We're still talking about Final Fantasy VII, the remake, and that was from E3 a couple of years ago. So the excitement is what wins people over, not the games that are available now. People, when people see these shows, they get excited, and that's what people remember, the excitement. It, what would you be more excited yeah. about, seeing a JPEG of a GPU or actually seeing the theoretical 
output of what the PS4K can do. Maybe an early slot. So you're strong. You're straw manning me here a little bit because I'm not excited about a JPEG of a GPU. I'm excited about 6,000 teraflops of processing 6, power. 6,000 teraflops? You know, whatever the fuck it was. Six teraflops. Or, you know, I'm, I'm excited that there is a huge bump in processing power coming to a console that sits in my living room or on my, in my office. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about. I don't give a shit about what this thing looks like. It could be three times the size of the Xbox One. I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> What I'm, what I do care about is 60 frames per second, you know, hopefully 4K gaming from a console. Like that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited to play Destiny, and Call of Duty, and Battlefield, and whatever game I'm playing in high res, high frames per second. I'm, I'm hoping. And, if, I'm hoping and that's, that's the that's the uh, that's the song Scorpio is singing. Yeah, well, they are singing that, and of course, Sony is aware of that. I'm thinking if they come out and talk about what they should do. Not only show hypotheticals or possibilities of what the graphics could look like, but they've also got to have some some competitive numbers when it comes to the GPU specs, when it comes to the memory, when it comes to yeah. what this thing is pumping out. Because, look, the society that we live in now is predominantly nerds, and I'm very, very proud to be a part of that denomination, okay? Yeah. Uh, and so that's the language that we speak. Sony knows that, and, and Microsoft really tapped into that vein when they announced the uh, the Scorpio. What will they do? They're definitely going to announce the PlayStation 4 Slim. They're going to definitely do that. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's really what I know for sure. And more than likely, they're going to at least talk about the Xbox Scorpio's competitor, codenamed Neo. Whether or not they do show you it. Think, you think, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you. No problem. Uh, whether they show it or not remains to be seen. I would hope that they would. But I think that releasing it right now would probably be a detrimental decision on Sony's part. When you take into consideration what Microsoft is working with and what they're building towards, you know, if, if my, so they're if not going to release that console that they already developed, that Neo, they're actually going to redesign it and release it in 2017. That's what I think. That's what you yeah. think. I kind of, yeah. I kind of, that's what I, that's what I at least I'm hoping they're doing because I'll tell you that Neo looked really exciting to me until the Scorpio was announced. <laughs> yeah. Right. And I was like, fuck this Neo. <laughs> What the Scorpio, man? Like, yeah. I, I, you know, obviously I'm on the Planet Destiny podcast, and people ask me all the time, like, if the Scorpio comes out, are you going to switch from PlayStation to the Xbox Scorpio? I'm like, fuck yeah, I am. <laughs> like, if it's offering I mean, higher frame rate, better graphical fidelity, the same game, I'm going to be playing it on the better version, man. And that's why, I, that's why I play it on the PlayStation now is because it's the better absolutely. version of the game. And if the, if that doesn't continue to be the case. And you gotta I, I'm and fucking out. <laughs> I mean, look, look, look. Let's keep it real, right? You know, I'm a, I love PlayStation. I've been playing PlayStation for years. Yeah. If the Xbox Scorpio comes out, and the PlayStation Neo is just what we've heard so far. If the rumors that we of what we heard this thing is true, and it doesn't compare to the Xbox Scorpio, all my multi-plats are going on the Xbox Scorpio. That's just plain and simple. Yeah. It's not even a debate. I mean, I want the best experience. Period. And, and if it's going to be a better game, it's going to run smoother, look better, have a higher pixel density, then I want, I want to go to whatever uh, console offers that, the, you know, barring PC, because I like playing games on my consoles over PC. Yeah. A lot of people are like, you can get this shit now if you just, you know, upgrade your rig. I'm not that guy, yeah. you know, even though I have a pretty decent PC. But, yeah, if, if the 4K comes out and it's what we've heard up until this point, the, the, the Scorpio is more than likely going to mop the floor with it. So Sony's got to... They've got a plan for it. I mean, I think it would be a little disingenuous of me or anybody to think that Sony's going to come out with what we already heard after this news of the Scorpio. You can't. You yeah, gotta, you can. Something sure has, you can. They didn't, they didn't make so, any official announcements about it. Yeah, well, I'm talking about if they are continuing with the rumors that we heard of a slightly beefed up PS4 yeah. versus the Scorpio. The Scorpio will still be twice as powerful as a slightly beefed up PS4. Right. The PS4 that we have now is 1.4 uh, teraflops, man. Yeah. So compare that's that not to the, six. That's not the difference between an Xbox One and a PS4 now. That's a pretty no. small difference between an Xbox One and a PS4. Double the power? That's a big fucking yeah. difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so... It is what it is. I'm, I'm I'm excited about this Sony conference. It's it's a matter of days away, man. Um, yeah. It's kind of like yeah, it is. It's, it's really kinda, coming cool soon. Yeah, I mean, whatever they show, I'm going to be down watching it. I, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for some new some new hardware. 
Yeah. Uh, and ho- hopefully some awesome game reveals too. Yeah, you know, it would, it would be cool to stuff. see some games. It would be so cool to see some games running on a new hardware. I do believe that they are going to announce. They're going to announce that slim, which you know obviously got leaked. Theoretically, we think it did. Um, and I do believe that they're going to announce the Neo. I do think that Neo is still going to come out in October of this year. Um, and I don't think that's a wise move. If I was running Sony right now, once I heard about that Scorpio, I would have fucking said, ah, fuck that. Cut. <laughs> we ain't doing that, I ma'am. Mean, <laughs> we we, we got to wait. I mean, the thing is, Sony, they know how, how big of a lead they have right now. They got double the consoles sold. If Microsoft comes out with the Scorpio and it's much better than the, the Neo, yeah. Microsoft will catch up, man. Yeah, They'll and I know that and I know you don't like this idea of like kind of moving forward in a console generation, like just beefing up the power continuously and still being able to play all your games. I actually love the idea, and if I can well, play all the games I have on Xbox One on the Scorpio, and they just look better, like that, that's well, like a no lose, man. We we actually have a, a a little story about that in our news. Um, oh right, we got news. A- Aaron Green- <laughs> Xbox rep Aaron Greenberg thinks that the future is without console generations, highlighting the fact that iterative hardware allows the Xbox platform to continue to build upon its established community and growing library of games. So what what Aaron Greenberg thinks is, first of all, he said that the Xbox Scorpio is going to be their last generation, that everything from that point on is going to be iterative and is going to just be advances and and upgrades versus mm-hmm. new console generations. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the direction that you're talking about where things don't take a drastic change, but you do see advances in hardware to the point where, okay, you're going to upgrade, but everything continues to work. What they're thinking at Microsoft from this point on with their hardware is they want complete backwards compatibility from this day on with every single machine that they create. They want anybody on the Xbox One to be able to play on the Xbox Scorpio and whatever comes next after that and be able to continue to enjoy these games and just have higher resolution and frame rate. That is a good good thing to hear, and that's really it speaks to the heart of what you were just saying. The only thing about that is, I feel that that I feel that we would be kind of stagnant it per- personally. I like that jump in console generation. I like to see those changes be made, and if if hardware continues to advance at the rate it's been doing for the last fifteen years, you know, every couple of years you will be able to see a new console generation because hardware is going to advance that fast. The idea that we're going to just continue to play backwards compatible games and higher resolution. To me, it kind of, it kind of segments the possibility of true advances in hardware when you're constantly playing backwards compatible games instead of playing games that are made for new hardware. That's my thoughts on it. I think if a new console comes out with six teraflops of GPU power and 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 super fast RAM, that if you're playing an Xbox One game on it, you're still playing an up up res uh, Xbox One game. I think that the possibility of playing a game that's made to really push the envelope of a machine that boasts six teraflops and super fast RAM and all these things that the Xbox Scorpio has is what we'll be missing. I feel like we'll constantly be playing something from an older generation up res to look great. Of course, it's going to play fine. It's going to look better than any of the older generations, but that one game that could push the envelope for the new hardware will never exist because all it's doing is playing old backwards compatible games up rest to a new new hardware standard that's my point that yeah, you know, and that's wanna... an understandable concern man it's like if they always have to keep in mind the not just the current hardware but the last three generations you know look at the iphone right is it, mm-hmm. when you develop a you know a game for the iphone okay where we got the seven coming out so we definitely want to target that but so many people have the six s and mm-hmm. so many people have the six like millions and millions of people have the 6s and the 6. Do we really want to make a game that's so graphically intensive that we leave all those people behind? The Absolutely. benefit would be that if you have a game that is just running on the 7, you can make it graphically amazing. But you're really limiting you your money. Yeah, you're li- really limiting your player base. But you know, if you announce it, if you come out right when the seven comes out, you know you can really blow people away, and 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 that's the part that's the double-edged sword, right? Because yeah. when when Sony and Microsoft are talking about this iterative hardware and these uh, advances in, in technology, the first thing that they say is nobody is going to get left behind. Right. We want all the PlayStation Four, all the Xbox One gamers to know that when you when we create this new hardware, the games are still going to work across these half-generation uh, consoles. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and that is a good thing to hear, but it's a double-edged sword because if a developer wants to really tap into the potential of that hardware power and, and they start creating a game that will run and, and really push the envelope on the newer generation of hardware and it's just not possible on that last generation, then the people are they feel lied to. Just say a, an awesome developer creates a game for the Scorpio that looks incredible, but there's no way that this game is going to run on the Xbox One. And Microsoft sees this game and they're like, this game is an, it's the best looking game ever made. It looks incredible. Story's incredible. Do we do we lie to the Xbox One gamers and not let this game come out? Or do we let the, de the developer go on with their original dream by pushing the envelope and not worry about pissing off the gamers who we told weren't going to be left behind? That's the thing. That's a theoretical uh, issue that I don't know would actually happen in real life. Yeah, well, who you guys, knows? You know, the way we've basically seen 3D development on PC go, you know, pretty pretty linearly for a long time now you know yeah. people can upgrade pcs they can upgrade graphics cards um in the game it's the same fucking game it just looks better and better and better as you go there's no like new features or anything coming out because you bought a 1080 like the game doesn't actually physically change if you have a 1080 over a 780 mm -hmm. uh, it just looks a fucking load better and i think you know i think the console manufacturers see that it's not like we're gonna get a leap from you know the from like the Nintendo, uh, the, like the Super NES Nintendo to the to the, to the, Wii, yeah. To the yeah. yeah, we're not looking at any leaps that are two D to three D anymore. We're just looking it's at already, getting three yeah. D better and better and better. And the way you do that is by throwing power at it. And if they could yeah. throw power at it slowly, the difference between a PS four game and a PS four Neo game would be you know higher res textures, faster frame rates. You know more lighting effects you know all the stuff that's that you a, see in the thing. options of a pc game pc is going would to be just be automatically game. selected on or off on the ps neo and the ps yeah well it's exciting nonetheless i can't wait to see what happens you know in the next year a lot of the gaming world is going to change it within the next two years we're going to be sitting in yeah. a totally different spot and looking at god how how well this company did how well this console did this hardware is amazing or who failed, you know, in their endeavors. And I can't wait to see what happens. Mm -hmm. um, continuing on with a little bit of news. We do have a little bit. Our, our newsman uh, was not available today. He left uh, us but in the, in the wilderness. <laughs> in the wilderness of Canada. Uh, Konami is not going to stop until they piss off the entire world. They're like Pinky in the Brain, but they don't want to take over. They want to piss everybody off. Metal Gear <laughs> Survive was revealed at this year's Gamescom. This new take on the series pits you and up to three other players in an online co-op scenario where stealth, stealth mechanics and tactics play a big part in your survival. Expect insane action and epic Metal Gear battles, all that plus a AAA experience for under $60. Uh, so <laughs> this is uh, big news. A lot of people have been talking about this. I actually didn't get a chance to do any news. I've been hanging out with my cousin all weekend. Uh, but Konami has, is now doing a spinoff on the Metal Gear series, and a lot of people are not upset with this because they feel like now a beloved franchise has been, you know, a pinnacle of stealth action for, you know, over a decade, well over a decade, is now going to go down the crapshoot because the heart and soul of the series is gone. And Konami is going to do anything they can to, you know, squeeze blood from a turnip and get as much money as they can out of this franchise, even if it means killing the franchise. Now, I did see the trailer. Uh, of course, they're using the magnificent Fox engine to create this game it does look great but even watching the trailer i didn't feel like i was looking at a metal gear game have you had a chance to see the trailer or hear anything about this news Brian? this isn't metal gear unless kojima is involved right it's just keep it real <laughs> it's true though isn't it <laughs> like That's you can call it metal gear but it... let's be honest <laughs> let's be honest be honest with me and be honest with yourself it's not metal gear if kojima is not involved it's not. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the <laughs> whole thing, right? They, they want to capitalize on this new trend, which, of course, is really, really big in console and, and, and online games, is this always online type of competitive, I mean, co-op experience where you and three of your buddies can get together and, and go out and stealthily take out enemies, AI-controlled enemies, and, uh, and Metal Gears, which does sound fun, but it does not sound like Metal Gear. No. It is not what Metal Gear has ever been about. And... and as a company, I used to I used to love Konami, man. They made all the Turtles games and Contra and Castlevania and Silent Hill. 
they're one of my favorite companies out there when it came to the gaming world. And now it's like a company I loathe. I hate Konami for what they've done uh, in some of their business dealings and dealing with some of these people who worked, you know, with the company for many, many years. This is a game that unless somehow magnificently it comes out and it's just an awesome game. Everybody loves it and it gets tens across the board and, and Briar Rabbit buys it. Unless that happens, I'm not going I'm, I'm to stay away from Konami at all costs. They need to know that the choices they've made uh, as far as Konami, as far as uh, Kojima, Kojima uh, Productions, as far as Silent Hills, as far as their dealings mean something to the consumers. And so I will not be buying this game or, or looking to buy it anytime soon. But you guys let us know in the comments what you think about it. You know, we're, we're always anxious to hear your thoughts. Will you support buying uh, Metal Gear Survive and playing that with three of your buddies online? Does it sound fun to you? To me, it's just not that great. I mean, the All idea right. does so, sound somewhat appealing now. <laughs> the, the thing is, right, when I first saw the trailer, I watched it with my wife, and I was like, that would be so fun to play together. And then in the back of my mind, my brain got slapped. It's like, wait a minute, you're talking about Konami. And I was like, fuck Konami. <laughs> you know? What if they did it sounds what if they did something similar to that, but with uh Last of Us? Like a multiplayer Last of Us, a cooperative Last oh. of Us. <laughs> that could be dope, right? Stop it, Brian. Why Imagine if they did the next Last of Us in kind of like a semi open world and you could play it you could play it like uh with like a group of three people all on the same team fighting together. Oh my god. How sweet would that be? That'd be fun. Oh That'd be god. a fun yeah. game. Yeah, well, check it out. My brother's down here. He's an engineer. He came down to Georgia and, and, and did some work uh, Thursday and Friday of last week. Stay with me. He flew out today. But he had never seen uh, The Last of Us ever. And so I showed him the game. I gave him the controller. He played through the first 10 minutes. And of course, you saw the emotion coming from his eye. Right, yeah. I mean, he said, Brett, this is a game I'm definitely going to buy. I have to have it. Yeah. I was like, all right, good. And I showed my brother the same game, and he bought a PS4 the very next day. So if they were able to do that and somehow keep that same feel, that same uh, energy, that same atmosphere, but introduce other people to play it co-op, oh, that'd be... I would never – I wouldn't leave the world. That would be, be like so division. fun, dude. It would be like the division in a much better world. Yeah, right? Because the division – like the promise of the division was so hype. If it had played like The Last of Us – Oh, oh shit! I'd be all over that game. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, oh, I mean, let's make that game. <laughs> I, I, I wish. I wish I could, my friend. Oh I my god. <laughs> so I just now, got a semi. Oh, well. <laughs> it's got a little chub. Show me, please, <laughs> All right, so I haven't had a chance to play the Titanfall 2 Alpha slash Beta. Me neither. I didn't even find out about it. I did see the, the, the video and footage of the game, and it did look good. I saw the single-player trailer. And my initial thoughts would have been that people were super excited about Titanfall 2, especially now when it's a multi-platform game. But uh, uh, apparently the, the pre-orders for Titanfall 2 are extremely low. Uh, if Titanfall 2's success lied solely on its pre uh, pre-orders, then it would surely be a dud. With 12 weeks until the game's launch, when compared to the original Titanfall's pre-order numbers, it falls very short. 12 weeks before Titanfall 1's launch, there were 43,000 pre-orders on the Xbox 360 and 160,000 pre-orders on the Xbox One. Titanfall 2's pre-orders are only at 19,000 per platform, a number so low that it didn't even make the pre-order listing. Let's see where they end up. So, First of all, okay, I got I got problems with this story because it's fucking ridiculous. The fact that you're judging the 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 validity the and the success of a game based on the pre-orders, pre go fuck yourself. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> <laughs> second of all, now that the uh, like I'm looking at people who are playing this game. I haven't I haven't played it yet. I'm really looking forward to playing it because everybody knows I love Titanfall. I'm really looking forward to Titanfall too. Everybody's loving this fucking game, so I wouldn't be at all surprised if the pre-orders go fucking crazy. They got another test build, I think, coming out next week. I wouldn't be surprised if they have an open beta between now and launch. Uh, but people are loving this game. They're saying it's way fun. We get a single player as opposed to with Titanfall. We did not get a single player. It's now it's going to come out on the uh, on the Xbox One and on the PS4 as well as PC. Uh, I mean, it, all things are pointing towards success with this game. 
Uh, it does have to get over some of the hump that the previous game... There is some ill will toward this game based on all the hype that was uh, coming out for it. And then the game came out and it was like, well, it's good. Like, the gameplay is awesome, but there ain't a lot to it, you know? That's the thing, right? Uh, when I played Titanfall, I, I was late to the party. You know that. You had already yeah. left a while before right. that. But uh, as far as the community went, Titanfall, the reason that it failed was because of the lack of content, but not just story content. From what I understand, mm -hmm. because I didn't have a chance to play through the game and get a feel for all the weapons, but there was a lack of abilities, a lack of Titans. There was a lack of weapons, too. Yeah. There was only like 12 weapons that you yeah, could use in the many. entire game. And so... What, and there what was it felt one like good was, one. <laughs> yeah, they 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 had a great engine and they had a, a good looking game running on it and they focused on that and wanted to get it out. Of course, they got shareholders and and people who really want them to meet deadlines. Yeah. But I think Titanfall would have been huge if they spent a little bit more time refining. Yeah, if they had another detail. year for Titanfall, I think it could have been something really special. I think Titanfall Two is more of what we expect to, expected to see when we got Titanfall, and I'm looking forward to playing this. The campaign in this game because that world is pretty fleshed out just based on like the very limited like view of it we got from the original like i want to play more of this i want to be in this world more it looks cool it's the gameplay is phenomenal i love the addition of the grappling hook from what i've seen of it it just really opens up how useful you are as a pilot like it looks like it's gonna be a blast man i've, I've watched it i don't know i'd say about 30 minutes worth of gameplay and i'm really excited to play I didn't get a chance to see all that gameplay, but I do love a grappling hook. I just finished playing. I didn't get a chance to tell you what I played this week. We didn't oh, talk shit. about it yeah. uh, at the beginning of the show. My but my wife and I, the reason I haven't been buying a lot of games, guy, guys, is not because I'm poor. Because I'm actually, I'm doing okay. Doing uh, all right. But doing all right. I'm, I'm surviving, brother. <laughs> but for, for me, uh, the reason I haven't been buying every game, No Man's Sky, um, Games like this are triple A's and everybody's excited about it is because I've probably got, Brian, I'm not kidding, 30 games I've never played. You know, just sitting collecting dust or yeah. collecting or taking up hard drive space right now. And so I've been actively trying to get through them. I've been doing reviews. And yesterday I actually finished um, Dying Light, the following, the DLC to Dying Light. And man, I had a blast. And, and you just made that come to the back of my mind when you talked about Titanfall 2's grappling hook because the grappling hook in Dying Light is a necessity. You have to use it. They've added so many new things in Dying Light the following. I know this game is kind of old, but i got to get through my backlist, guys. I'm sorry. But I had a great time playing it. And, uh, yeah, grappling hooks rule. Yeah, so, they do. <laughs> now, uh, the, the last little bit of news uh, that we have on, on today's Beastly Thoughts show concerns Nintendo. Nintendo's 3DS sales are up 80% year over year on Pokemon Go's success. The huge success of Pokemon Go has helped push Nintendo's 3DS uh, to the top in hardware sales and software sales. The Mighty Handheld is up 80% compared to last year, and Pokemon Go, I mean, <laughs> Pokemon Go, Pokemon Omega Red and Alpha Saf Sapphire sales have seen major boosts and most believe that it's due to the ever-popular Pokemon Go. So the, the software sales and the hardware sales of Nintendo's 3DS have gone through the roof. A lot of people are attributing it to Pokemon Go, which is the biggest mobile game out there right now on iOS and Android. I, it's kind of funny to me that people play Pokemon Go and get excited and go uh, buy Pokemon Omega Red and Alpha Sapphire because they're playing Pokemon Go on their phones. To me, that's really amazing. That's cool, man. That's and and Nintendo's hardware is the biggest selling hardware. They, they outsold the PlayStation and, uh, on, and, and the Xbox as well. So they're That's really amazing. doing well with that 3DS. Right. And that, how old is a 3DS now? It has to be... Eight years? Five fucking, years? I don't know. It, it's at least five. It's I'll probably least, say right? around six and a half. Yeah, six and a half, seven years. And it's still selling like that. Wow. And that that says something about the mobile market, man. You know, we talked about it earlier. The mobile yeah. phones yeah, and the tablets does. and how big a deal it is. But people still are going to their dedicated mobile uh, gaming hardware when it comes to Nintendo. So Nintendo yeah. has their hand on the pulse of the world when it comes to that. And that's why I was saying Sony still has a chance. Because if you do it right, if you build it right, they will come. You got to get support, Nintendo though, will... too. You got to get developer support on there. They're not the Nintendo first party is not Nintendo, you know? Or, I'm sorry, Sony yeah. first party is not Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing that's keeping the 3DS alive, too. Nintendo's yeah. first party. You know, they got so many great games. I'm happy to see Nintendo seeing a little bit of success. 
you know, the Pokemon Go story has been really big in the yeah. news. I still have, haven't tried it once. I get I'm surprised. Problems. No. I'm not saying it because I, I have anything against the game. It's I just don't have time. Ain't got the time. I just, yeah. You know, uh, I don't have time. <laughs> and so maybe one day when I do, I'll try it. But I keep getting pop-ups on my iPad saying, download Pokemon Go and get out there and go. And I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> not not right Do your kids now. play it? Do your kids have uh, yeah, phones? Ev- everybody does. Yeah. yeah. Nobody and they're playing it? Yeah. They, they don't stop. Every time we go to the store, we go to Kroger or Walmart, uh, everybody's in the parking lot. You know, there was one on my arm in my here in the house. I didn't even want to look at the screen. You know, I don't want to get involved. This one, I don't want to I'm get involved. Gonna, I don't want to get addicted to this particular it, heroin addiction. <laughs> that's, honestly, that's exactly how I feel about it. Yeah. You know, everybody's super excited about this game, this uh, this application, this game on iOS and Android, and everybody's playing it, and and that kind of scares me. It's like the whole Facebook craze when Facebook first came out, and I was still on MySpace, man. Yeah. And everybody was saying, "Beastly, come over to Facebook," and I was like, "Hell no! It's just blue. I don't want to go see some blue shit. I can put background music on my page on on MySpace, okay? I can put a picture of a woman doing whatever as my background. This is women do stuff on MySpace, and I, I didn't want to do it. And then I finally found what kind out. of stuff like gardening? Absolutely, you know." How <laughs> <are>. <laughs> You know how them hoes be, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that one up to your imagination, I guess. <laughs> yeah. You guys are so damn dirty. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like if I, if I was to download Pokemon Go, I'd be, you know, I'd go crazy. Because it's not something that's just getting the kids. This is getting people our age. It's getting people middle age, and it's even getting the elderly involved. And I feel like that's some form of mind control, and I like to have control, you know? Well, what's cool, <laughs> I, I got I to gotta give that game up. It's got fucking huge problems, right? But the, yeah. base, the base of it is it's fun to go out and catch these things. It's just fun. <laughs> that's you know, what it I'm is. saying. And when you got your kids doing it too, it's fun to go out as a group, as a family. It's like it's a really easy thing that a family can get behind and do together. Mm. And... uh that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah, well, my, my son got in trouble yesterday. Uh, you know, kids will be kids. Yeah. But my 14-year-old, we went to see the UFC fight, you know, pay-per-view last night. Yeah. And and, and we, we got to see Connor and, and, and Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz do that thing. Do it. I mean, they went off fighting. Yeah. And the whole time, my 14-year-old was in the corner on his phone. And I said, son, what are you doing? And he was like, oh, nothing, Dad. I said, get off your phone. Just turn it off. And he was like, yes, sir. Turned it off. About 20 minutes later, I look, he's in the dining room with the table on his phone. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I asked him what he was doing. I said, bring me your phone. He brought. He got up and came into the living room and gave me his phone, but he had discreetly turned it off. <laughs> I said, why are you turn off the phone? He said, oh, my battery was going dead. So I turned it back on, went to the application he was on, which is called Kick. And it, the name of Kick is great because if parents read what the kids are saying on there, then they're going to go kick their kid's ass. <laughs> it's great. And so I looked, and my son was talking to some woman from Thailand and asking her that she want a video chat. So, yeah, maybe Pokemon Go is a little bit better for him than fucking Kick. Yeah. You and know what I like about uh, I got the iPhones for my kids? Is what? that I can control all the apps I get installed on it. I oh, get a man, little that's... notification that pops up on my screen that says, uh, your child would like to, d- to download this app. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Not man, so much. I'm, I'm, I might have to make the iOS switch if that's the fucking case. <laughs> because, you know, these kids are getting older. You know, they're getting hair in strange places, and they're starting to think of strange things. I'm trying to keep them focused, man. High school, yeah. college. Don't worry about everything else. And it's a really tough job being a parent. Briar, you know. You know how tough yeah. it is. Man. We we caught one of them doing that, you know, checking out the uh, prawn, <laughs> as the kids say. And, yeah. uh, you know, we confronted him about it, and he denied it. I said, look, if you're not old enough to talk about it. You're not old enough to look at it. That's, uh-huh. that's the deal right there. Yeah, and see, the thing is, for young people, don't lie to your parents because they, they've already been where you are. and It's very easy for them to catch you up in a lie. So read my son's text last night. He introduced himself to this girl in Thailand. Yeah. And she introduced her, then she introduced herself. Uh-huh. And he was like, oh, you're so pretty. And I'm like, way to go, son. She is pretty. I'm thinking that, right? Then he was like, you want a video chat tonight? And she was like, I don't really know you. And so I asked him, I said, why are you asking people you don't know to video chat? He said, oh, Dad, I know her. We, we, we met before. 
I said, you just introduced yourself five minutes ago. And then he didn't say anything else. And I, that's I'm hoping she's gonna get naked, Dad. That's when keeping it real goes wrong. So, you know, keep your eye on your damn kids because they will try. You You know, I remember being a kid. If we had the kind of stuff that these kids have now, Briar, the world would be in flames right now. Oh, yeah. And our parents would have had no fucking way how to deal with it, man. It was like, I'm I'm on the edge of my seat and I'm a nerd. (laughs) Trying to keep up. Yeah. My mom mom doesn't know what YouTube is. I tell her I I work for YouTube. She's like, where is that? I'm like, Mm -hmm. "Uh, it's somewhere, but it's Uh, online. It's a long commute, mom. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But luckily I get to work from home. (laughs) I I wanted to uh, give a shout out to to Mr. Robbie uh, today. He's not here, but we feel for you, Robbie. We, We held it down for you. The same way that you asked us to. I do want to apologize to you guys because the very last second before we did the show, uh, we had to kind of get everything together. Today, everything was kind of mixed up. I want to give a shout out to everybody who's watching the show on uh, Twitch and on YouTube. Thank you guys for supporting Briar and myself and Robbie. It means the world to us. Thank you all so much. Yeah, thank you guys. We had a new subscriber too. Uh, I wanted to shout that out. I think it was what their Silent, name is? Silent Doom. Thank you for the new subscription. I appreciate that. Silent Doom. Silent Doom. Thank you, thank you. Silent hey, Ghost, Doom. how's it going Silent down there? Doom. We didn't... We we almost made it through a show without getting, like, perverted and, like, you know, talking about... We did pretty well, I think. Like, we held it down, especially without having Robbie here. Like, you'd think that yeah. we'd just go off the deep end. You yeah. know? <laughs> We're let, set loose. <laughs> but we did, yeah. we did pretty well today. We, we did get, damn good, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We've been doing this together. We've we've been together for a lo- you know it's a long lasting relationship. Is it coming it's up been, on three years or two years? I think it's, it's three years. Coming up on three. Three, three years. years, yeah. Yeah, so we've been doing this for a very fucking long time. We've we've already hit the two year mark at episode one ten. Mm-hmm. So we're we're in our third, and you know that's how marriages work, guys. You gotta do the good and bad. You know when the third wheel of the tricycle leaves, you gotta keep on riding. Yeah. BC keeps wanting to tell me he wants an open relationship. I'm like, no, man, we ain't doing that. I'm too jealous. Whatever you want. I'm too Whatever jealous. You <laughs> Whatever you want. You know, you know, this ring is all you. Whatever you want, brother. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week again. Have an awesome day. Peace.